Hello and welcome to DFS Coach Talk. It is Saturday, September 18th, 2021. I am Inner Hansen alongside Joe Stanton and Josh Crash Davis. We've got the three-man booth here for week two. I'm fired up, fellas. Do you think we're going to be able to pull this off and figure out who's sitting where? Yeah, I think we will. We'll, we'll figure this out as we go for sure. So one, got a one good, step at a time. We got a good crew. Go. Yeah, we got the we got the uh, all star crew here, a list crew. Yeah. Uh, we pulled Joe in. He's been helping me on the Wednesday night shows for Thursday night. Josh has handled the week one main slate, but Josh, you're, you must be real feeling a little bit after that Packers loss. So we we kind of yeah. brought Joe in here for some reinforcements for you. <laughs> He's here for the encouragement, yeah. and I'm here he for even, it. He can't even talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, we've got each other's backs here. That's how we do it at, at DFS Coach Talk. And today we're going to try to get your backs as we get you ready for the main slate. We're going to go position by position. We'll start with quarterbacks. We'll hit running backs. Then we'll get those pass catching wide receivers and tight ends. We'll follow up with a couple defenses. And the interesting thing about this main slate this week is that all of the totals, the four highest totals, are in the four o'clock games. There's nine early games, four late games. So, Joe, let me start with you as we as we go to quarterback here. Are you going to be able to wait that long in this slate to fire up your quarterback? And if so, who are you are looking at first? Thanks, Andrew. I think so. I think I'll be able to wait a little bit. Um, my favorite quarterback to target here is Russell Wilson. Um, he's playing in that later games he, against the Titans. Um, who the Titans not, not have good outing against um, the Arizona Cardinals in week one. Let Kyler Murray pretty much carve him up. Um, and I think Russell Wilson has a great story here. Um, he had 14.1 yards per play um, against a good Colts defense in week one. Um, Tyler Lockett caught a good majority of those passes, but he looked really strong in the pocket. Um, and, and likewise, with, with everything going on in Russell Wilson's world, um, his mental conditioning coach, um, Trevor Moad, passed away earlier this week um, mm -hmm. to, to a long battle with cancer, which is very upsetting, very sad. Um and Russell Wilson's come out in the media saying that, you know, he's, um, you know, he, he's very sad and heartened, but he's also ready to get after it on Sunday and, and commemorate that game to Trevor. Um, and, and that's a narrative to follow, um, as sad as it may be. Um, and so, so this would be if Russell Wilson were to win this Sunday against the Titans, um, it'd be the hundredth win of his career, um, which is up there in the record books. And Trevor was a part of those 99 career wins forward for Russell Wilson. Um, so everything combined in a good game script that I think is going to have a high total. Same, um, that's what the Bet US lines say as well. Um, I think it's a, I think it's a good value um, to still pay up for Russell Wilson. Uh, I really like the play. I mean, he was sharp last week with four touchdowns. Murray dominated these guys with five touchdowns, four through the air, one on the ground. And like you said, those are some big narratives, and we certainly look at those at DFS Coach Talk. We don't play them all. But sometimes they, they give guys an edge in, in real life and, and for fantasy as well. So I like that start. Uh, the first quarterback I'm looking at, uh, in addition to Wilson, is also playing late, Justin Herbert, uh, going on, uh, up against Dallas. And we know that Tom Brady really uh, handed it to them on that opening night, 379 yards passing, four touchdowns. Herbert, meanwhile, you know, decent start, 337 yards and a score. But this is a, a monster total here, 55 uh, Chargers favored by three, looking like a potential shootout. And I, I just don't see Dallas slowing that, that passing attack down. So I'm looking at Herbert here as a potential you know, mid-tier option, not, not too expensive. You can save a little bit. He's only 6,700 on DraftKings. Mm -hmm. Josh, yeah, are you, uh, I, you okay with those two guys as, as payups? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Russell Wilson, Justin, Justin Herbert, my first two quarterbacks I was looking at this week. So definitely on those two. OK, well, good. We're, we're all on the same page. So uh, let's give our listeners a little bit of variety here. How about an additional quarterback from you, Josh? Yeah, so I'm looking at Joe Burrow this week. He's 5,800 on DraftKings. He's going up against the uh, Bears defense that allowed 323 yards and three touchdowns to Matthew Stafford last week. And there's just a lot of question marks on that Bears uh, secondary outside of Jalen Johnson, you've got Kendall Vildor, who's an unproven fifth round draft pick. And then you've got uh, Marquis Christian who pro pro football focus ranks with one of the worst coverage grades on the slate at 28.4. So Burrow should be able to find plenty of open receivers 
Uh, he's got some good ones in Higgins and Boyd and, you know, Jamar Chase really impressed last week. So three solid receivers that he can look to all day. Yeah, he's got to be excited about those weapons and, and Mixon and uh, things are looking up for Cincinnati. Heard Burrow talking about, uh, you know, let's go two in a row here and going game by game. He sort of sounded like Tom Brady already. So, yeah, I uh, got to love that. All right, I've got one more to add to the mix before we go to running backs. Teddy Bridgewater, and Joe, I have a feeling you'll be okay with this as a Mr. Broncos man here out in Denver. But Teddy's a nice price on DK if you want to pay down a little bit. He's only 5400 and he's got Jacksonville. And we saw Tyrod Taylor. I mean, he put up almost 300 yards passing, a couple scores, ran for 40 yards. Teddy can do the same thing. You know, he was very solid against the Giants. So he's got his, his feet under him, uh, 264 and two. He ran it a few times. Uh, and just tough to beat that $5,400 price tag. I agree. A Andrew, I really like that call out. Um, I think Tyra Taylor um, carved up the Jacksonville Jaguars last week. Um, and I'm not saying it's a big jump to get to Teddy Bridgewater, but um, I think Teddy Bridgewater is a better quarterback than Tyra Taylor. I don't think too much bias goes into that thought. Um, I like him. I think it's a great play. He's got a lot of weapons. Um, you know, I know you're going to get there later, but um, he's got those two tight ends in Noah Fan and Albert O and a great wide receiver core. Um, so I think he's really primed to uh, get Jacksonville there, and the Broncos are going to be 2-0. So um, pretty excited for that. Yeah, you can bank on it. You heard it here first. <laughs> All right, let's, go to, let's go to the running backs here. Um, yeah. Joe, why don't we start with you? Do you have a payoff option for us? I do. Uh, very much a cash play. Um, I like Alvin Kamara a lot versus the Carolina Panthers this week. Um, the Panthers have been notoriously um, in the past um, pretty bad at stopping the run. Um, of course, against the Jets last week, um, the Jets backfield committee is a, is a real head case. Um, but the Saints have about a 41% uh, run advantage here uh, versus the Jets. And, and I think the Saints, uh, Josh, I'm sorry um, about last week, but uh Kamara had 83 rushing yards on 20 carries. Um, the backup Jones got in there basically when it became a blowout because they're not going to risk that injury with Kamara. I think the game maybe will stay a little closer, but I also think there's going to be a lot of volume for Kamara. And I mean, he's their guy. Matt Rule came in and said he's our, he's a Hall of Fame type player. Um, I think as far as a high floor goes for your class, for your cash games, um, Kamara can be that guy for you. Okay, Josh, how about a, a pay up for you? Yeah, for me, I'm going to go with Nick Chubb. He got 23 carries last week against Kansas City, and I feel like he's going to have a heavy workload again um, this week against Houston. So much less uh, caliber opponent this week in, in Houston. So should be back in the end zone probably at least once, if not twice again on Sunday. So definitely going to run with Nick Chubb on Sunday. Okay. I'm going to go with a little bit of a cheaper option here for the first guy I'm going to mention, Eli Mitchell. And we know that he took over for Mostert, which was not very enjoyable. Uh, I know I had Mostert in, in a bunch of my lineups. And Mitchell got all those carries on over 100 yards in the touchdown. And he gets Philly this week. They gave up 4.8 yards per carry last week to Atlanta. And we know Shanahan can do some funky things with his backfield. It can be, it can be a bit of a committee sometimes. Uh, we'll see who else is active this week. But at 5,000 in a strong matchup, uh, I, I do like Mitchell here as a potential option. Absolutely. Um, I, I think the potential is there for Elijah Mitchell for sure to take over that back, to, to take over the bell cow work. We'll see what Trey Sermon says as he was a healthy scratch last week, but um, I think it's a great, I think it's a great game script. Um, and, and I'll go down um, as well. Um, a little higher than Elijah Mitchell, but to another popular guy um, who's, I think he's, might be the highest owned, but for good reason, um, it's Najee Harris. Um, going up against the Raiders. Now, last last week, um, he didn't have a great game. He had, he had 16 carries for about 45 rushing yards. Um, however, he was out there for 100% of the snaps. Um, and he's going up against a Raiders team in week two that led up the most rushing yards last, um, last week uh, to the Baltimore Ravens. Um, Max Crosby on the Raiders side was all over the field. I don't know if you guys caught that Monday night game. I'm sure you did. Um, he looked like an animal. Um, but the rest of those Raiders guys, um, they let Tyson Williams, they let Latavius Murray run all over them. Yeah. And I think Najee Harris is going to get that workload. They've made it a very good point to say, hey, you're going to be a strong part of our offense. Uh, ben Roethlisberger is not the guy 
that it used to be. Um, you know, I think the Pittsburgh Steelers defense is going to vault them up. And I think Najee Harris is going to have a big workload against the Raiders in week two. And I think he's a really solid option. I think that's a good word for it. Really solid option. I agree. Josh, who's next for you? Uh, for me, I'm going to go with David Montgomery. Um, he's 6,100 on DraftKings. He was really the only bear player last week on offense to find much success against the Rams, uh, which is understandable. I mean, it's the Rams defense, but um, I think they're going to rely on him pretty heavily as they continue to kind of work their way through with, with Andy Dalton until they transition over to Justin Fields. I think that that's kind of their safety net right now. So I think that he's going to get a lot of carries and probably at least – two or three receptions, if not more this week. So my guy is David Montgomery. All right. I'm going to wrap up with another value play. Chase Edmonds is 4,900 this week on DraftKings. Last week he got 16 touches, over 100 all-purpose yards. This week he gets Minnesota, and they really struggled last week with Mr. Mixon, allowing 150 all-purpose yards, a touchdown, four catches, uh, so I like Evans here uh, at 4,900 um, to help us pay up at some of these other positions. Yeah, I like I like Edmonds too. Had a good game last week against uh, Tennessee and should continue against Minnesota. Excellent. All right, before we get to the wide receivers, uh, Joe, why don't you mention uh, the giveaway this week uh, so we can get some more folks here in to take advantage of our lineups? Yeah, Absolutely. Uh, so if you go to our tweet, our pin tweet on our on our Twitter at DFS Coach Talk, um, you'll see a tweet promoting this YouTube video. Um, and if you retweet that tweet and this YouTube video eclipses 30 likes, um, we're going to be giving away a three day pass, uh, which will get you in for our NFL Sunday lineups um, and our Monday Night Football. And then obviously MLB in between uh, will get you in our discord. Um, so all you got to do is like this video, uh, go to our description on this YouTube video, go to our Twitter um, and retweet that tweet and, and we'll get you in here for our lineups. It's a great, it's a great offer and you know, it's free to do. Yeah. And then the thing that sets us apart is we give out full lineups to our members because we're, we're allowed to do that on FanDuel and Yahoo. And we've actually started to describe our GPP lineups a little bit so that members have a good feel for whether it's a bit of a conservative GPP or, or a much more risky one that may actually be unique and have a chance to take down a, a Millie maker or a big contest like that. So, we also give out the the cash lineup as well. So we're trying to help folks uh, build the bankroll with the cash lineups, you know, pick and choose their spots with the GPPs. And then on DraftKings, on the main slate, we give out the full coaches clipboard with highlighted core plays, which is a lot of fun every Sunday uh, to give guys uh, give guys and gals uh, the, the core plays on, on DraftKings. So you get all that as a member at DFSCoachTalk.com. That's where you sign up. And then again, if you have any questions, reach out to us on Twitter at DFS Coach Talk. All right, let's go to these pass catchers. Let's start with some wide receivers. Uh, Josh, why don't you kick us off here? Uh, any wide receivers you're looking at here to pay up for? Um, going to be looking for my pay up wide receiver. Going to be looking at DK Metcalf, um, pairing him up with Russell Wilson. We saw what Tyler Lockett did last week, and it seems to me from my experience that they kind of rotate like Tyler Lockett has a big game then DK Metcalf has a big game. So I'm looking for it to be DK's turn this week. So. Yeah. I mean, it can be as simple as that. And I agree. I mean, you don't usually see Lockett have two big games in a row. Mm -hmm. DK sometimes, you know, he can. Uh, so I, I do think it could be DK this week. You look at what DeAndre Hopkins did last week, six catches, a couple touchdowns in this matchup. Uh, so I, I love where you're starting there. Uh, I'm going to start with Keenan Allen, who had a strong first week. I'm looking for him to go back-to-back, -back, caught nine for 100 uh, against Washington, and now he's got that better matchup against Dallas. We've talked about how we like Herbert here. Mm -hmm. um, Do you like Mike Williams as well? Eight matchup, according to Pro Football Focus this week. I don't like him quite as much. Uh, you know, he's he's always more touchdown dependent to me. And uh, so I'm, I'm looking more at, at Keenan Allen here. Uh, and then you look at it was it was Godwin and Brown who, who work more in the slot like Allen. So I like Allen uh, a little bit more this week. That's awesome. I, I, I love that. I love that pick there. And um, Randy, Randy Gregory and Dexter Lawrence are out for the Dallas Cowboys, um, which is a big part of their pass defense. 
Um, Justin Herbert was, <clears throat> excuse me, Justin Herbert was fourth in in, in uh, quarterback rating, and he was actually pressured the least in week one. Um, kudos to the O line. So I think there's going to be a lot of passing work there uh, mm-hmm. for for Keenan Allen. Um, someone that I also like, and it's on the opposite side of the field, um, it's the tandem of Amari Cooper and C.D. Lamb. Um, Michael Gallup uh, went, went out. He's on the injured reserve, uh, which leads those two as those top two guys. Dak Prescott dropped back for, I think it was, 58 attempts in that first game versus Tampa Bay. Um, now, they weren't trying to run because Tampa Bay stuffed um, the middle for Ezekiel Elliott. Um, but there's a lot of passing to go around, and Dak looked really solid. Um, I think there's a lot of volume to be have to be had in Amari Cooper and CeeDee Lamb. Um, Cooper was peppered a lot in the red zone. They both were. Um, and I think Ezekiel Elliott will be more involved this game. Um, but I think just combined at both sides of the field, that Chargers-Cowboys game is the highest over-under. Um, it's one of the closest spreads for, for how high it is. Um, I think it's at a three right now or three and a half. So, that game script for me is going to be a shootout and I want to get action on both sides. Yeah, I do too. No doubt. Uh, And you know, if you're new to NFL DFS, a game stack can really be effective. If you have a quarterback and a wide receiver on one side and a wide receiver on the other side, you get that shootout that back and forth. And that can really be the key to taking down a GPP. Josh, how about a cheaper wide receiver for you? Yeah, it's funny you mentioned the game stack because I've got David Montgomery uh, kind of on the opposite side of my other game stack with Cincinnati. So I've got Burrow, and the, the second receiver for me is going to be Jamar Chase. Um, 5,000 on DraftKings. He's probably going to be pretty chalky, I would think, because that's a pretty low price for a receiver that put up as good of numbers as he did in week one. Um, you've got the Burrow to Chase connection from LSU, so there's a lot of familiarity there. So I definitely think that's going to be a pretty common theme this year. Um, he was targeted seven times against Minnesota. He had five receptions for 100 yards, 101 yards, and a touchdown. And he's projected to be lined up against um, Kendall Vildor, who I mentioned earlier is, is a fifth round draft pick, who is probably going to have his hands full with Chase all day. So, excellent. Yeah, nice value there if you stack those guys together. I've got uh, another target in that same price range. I'm looking at one of the Broncos receivers. Uh, for my lineups with Teddy Bridgewater. I got the thumbs up from Joe. So, okay, we're off to a good start. And I think all three are are playable to me. You look at what Brandon Cooks did to Jacksonville last week, five for 132. He moved up, he moved all over the field, uh, basically a third of his snaps in the slot and then left and right, according to Pro Football Focus. And so all these guys are good prices. You know, Sutton's 5,200 on DraftKings. Tim Patrick's a little bit cheaper. He's 46. Mm-hmm. So that's where I'm leaning right now. You get the price savings. He got four targets, Sutton only three. Uh, you know, it wasn't a huge passing volume in that game against the Giants. Uh, but Patrick, four catches on those four targets, and he got in the end zone. So good start. And of course, Judy is out now after that unfortunate injury. So Patrick and Sutton should get a, a couple more looks. You could even, you know, pay down to, to Hamler. But I'm looking at at Tim Patrick here. Uh, Joe, can you give a vote of approval on that? I'll back you up. I I, I oh, like yeah. it. They they I think they have a very underrated uh, wide receiver core and wide receiver room. I think KJ Hamler is really solid as well as Tim Patrick. I think the Tim Tim Patrick has the most to gain um, from Jerry Judy going out, um, and, and he was already peppered in Week One. I think I think any of those guys. Um, is, a, is a great play. Uh, for me, for my wide receiver value, I'm going to even go cheaper. Um, and I like KJ Osborne for the Minnesota Vikings um, going up against the Arizona Cardinals this week. Um, so in week one um, against the against the Bengals, KJ Osborne was seven for nine uh, for 76 yards. Um, and he solidified himself as the wide receiver three on the Minnesota Vikings defense. And, and, and Kirk was peppering him and, and thrown to him in, in pretty crucial big times. Um, it wasn't like he was just getting these shuffle off passes mm-hmm. and he just happened to get a lot of them. No, he was getting targets downfield and, and outside of Thielen Jefferson um, and of course, Dalvin cook. Um, I think this Arizona and uh, Minnesota game can get big um, and can be high scoring. And I think KJ Osborne is an awesome value because his, his price on Fandle is 4,600 and his price on DraftKings is, is 3,300 um, practically a giveaway. It's it's a free stamp on the bingo card. Um, maybe. Um, I just really like him in this one. I think he's good value. Um, yeah, are you guys, uh, what do you guys think of that take? 
Hey, anything that's a borderline stamp on the bingo card, yeah. uh, 3300 on DraftKings, it basically is free. Mm-hmm. Um, about as low as you can get. And, you know, get six, seven catches, uh, 67 yeah. yards, maybe even score. That's the exact type of guy you need on DraftKings, PPR. Uh, so I, I love that value play. Nice, nice yeah. call. Yeah, other than the fact that he's a Minnesota Viking, I think it's a great pick. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, is our awesome. Packer in the booth. Uh, yeah, through and through. Uh, awesome. All right, let's let's go to tight ends here. Um, yep. Joe, let's go back to you here for a potential pay up. Yeah. Um, so in the tight end spot, um, I really like George Kittle in this one. I think a lot of people might be off of Kittle for his uh, weak performance in week one. Um, but he's going up against this uh, Philadelphia. He's going up against Eric Wilson as a linebacker. Um, and Kittle is still one of the top premier um, tight ends in the league. I mean, it, it, don't jump to conclusions after week one. He is a crucial part of their offense. Um, and I also think people are going to look at Philadelphia and be like, you know, they really stopped Kyle Pitts. Um, and, and it was Kyle, P- Kyle Pitts' first NFL game. He dropped a good amount of passes. Um, he did not drop passes um, in college. That's why he was drafted. Um, and I think George Kittle is going to get open, um, just like Kyle Pitts did last last week, but he's going to get those receptions. And he'll probably get targeted more um, in this one. So I think Kittle's a really safe play here. Um, it's hard to say that he's going to be low owned with that high of price. Um, but I do think people are going to be off of him, And I think Kittle looks great, great in this type of game. Yeah. It's, it's, it says a lot about Kittle when he has a down game with four catches. Yeah. Um, and you know, with San Francisco, they spread the ball around the game plan. You know, he could easily have a monster game any, any day uh, of the week, uh, Sunday, Monday, Thursday. Uh, so, uh, certainly would make sense there if you've got the salary, Josh, yeah. Uh, who else are you looking at? Yeah, I'm going to go back to Gronkowski. I know he had a big game um, Thursday in the opener, season opener, but I mean, him and him and Brady are just loving life right now in Tampa Bay. So I think they're going to have another big game again um, going against Atlanta defense that, like I said last week, was the worst in the league last year in fantasy points allowed to tight ends. So going back to Gronk. Yeah, and, and you know, not much better in week one. They gave up six for 76 and a score to Goddard and Ertz. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the other nice thing about Gronk, Josh, is that it was the Thursday game. So he's got 10 days of rest. Yeah. And I always look very closely at the schedule. You know, guys like that, I mean, that took a lot out of him. He was the, the key there. Eight catches is a lot for Gronk. Mm-hmm. But he's had plenty of time to recover. You know, you look at that with running backs all the time. But for a veteran like Gronk, I think it's important as well. So yeah, he'll, he'll be ready to roll. He's forty seven hundred. I don't think I mentioned that forty seven hundred on DraftKings. So you think yeah, he so can? Uh, do you think he can average two touchdowns throughout the season? Oh, easily <laughs> thirty <laughs> touchdowns this year. That'd yeah. be something. That would yeah. be. yeah, they could if they would if they wanted to. But no, that you know they won't they won't need it for two every yeah. week. But he, he you know at least he shows that he still got it. Uh, so. Uh, I'm going to look at Tyler Higby here. Liked him in week one. He went for five, five, five for 68. You know, Everett is not in town anymore, and that that's huge. And now he gets uh, Indianapolis, and last week his old buddy Everett was out there with Disley. They combined for five and 57 in a score. Uh, so you can beat Indianapolis with the tight end, and I just like that Higby – is off to a good start with Stafford here. Nice week one, good matchup, good mm-hmm. price, forty one hundred. Uh, so I may yeah. go there and s- save a few bucks. Andrew, he was out there for a hundred percent of the snaps uh, on that Monday Night Football game. So the opportunities there. I also have Higby written down as one of my top guys. Um, love that call. Excellent. All right. Well, all we have left is uh, defense to fill out our rosters. So uh, Joe. Do you want to kick it off for us? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it sounds like we're all Broncos fans on the podcast here today. Um, so might as well close it out and let you know that I really like the Broncos as a defense here. Um, they looked really good against the Giants um, in, in week one. I think you got Bradley Chubb and Von Miller up front, and it's going to be Patrick Sertan's um, coming out party against the Jaguars. And in the preseason, he already had a pick six. Um, I think the Jaguars last week got – they didn't do much against it and gets a tough or sorry against a, against a weak Houston defense. And I think against an even better Broncos defense with Trevor Lawrence in the second game, um, you know, no knock on Trevor Lawrence, but you know, he, he had a, had a few turnovers in week one. 
Um, I think the Broncos are going to be a popular pick. However, I think um, that's for good reason as well because I think they they have a great match against Jag, uh, against the Jags. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. I mean, if they can't uh, get much done against Houston with all those turnovers, like you said, that's what we like. We like turnovers and potential pick sixes, and uh, so good start. Josh, how about you? Yeah, first of all, I don't know if we're going to be Broncos fans every week, Joe, but, hey, they're playing the Jack players, so <laughs> right. that's what happens when you play Jacksonville this year. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go with the Arizona Cardinals. They're 2,900 on DraftKings. You know, everybody was talking last week about Tennessee, Julio Jones, and A.J. Brown, and Derrick Henry and everything, and the Cardinals just shut them down. Um, they only scored 13 points, and they got after Tannehill. They sacked him six times, so – this should be an easier matchup um, for Arizona, and so they should have another huge day. Yeah, that was a terrific start for them, unfortunately, because I liked those Tennessee guys last week. Yeah, me too. All right, my defense here to add to the mix, I'm going to go with the Patriots at 3,700 on DraftKings. They've got the Jets, and Bill Belichick really does well in these matchups against rookie quarterbacks. Low total here, 43, Patriots favored by six. Um, they only they only gave up 259 yards in that loss to Miami. So, you know, don't just look at the final score. You know, you're looking in at the details there. And the Jets' offense, uh, you know, Wilson did okay in week one, but how about mm-hmm. the rushing attack, if you want to call it that, 17 carries for 45 yards? Yeah. You know, yeah. If, if they're one-dimensional, then, you know, Bill Belichick can just get really aggressive with – getting after Wilson. Uh, and so I think you could do a lot worse than uh, the, the Patriots in a, you know, potential low scoring game against the jets. Mm-hmm. I definitely agree with Josh, that. You know, okay, good. Yeah. Josh, I was thinking the same thing about the Broncos. I'm glad you mentioned that, you know, we all are Broncos fans, this week, <laughs> but that's DFS. It is week to week. Um, so you got to put your biases aside, break it down one week at a time, one matchup at a time. So that's what we do here at DFS Coach Talk. Hopefully that helped everybody get ready for week two. In terms of the schedule, we're going to have another podcast later tonight where we break down the primetime games Sunday and Monday night. Josh and I are going to do that. And as you know, we're, we're into the groove here with the Wednesday night podcast, Joe and I getting after the Thursday night football game. So hit the like button yep. if you wouldn't mind. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, Joe, you want to hit the giveaway one more time? Yeah, Absolutely. Um, go to our Twitter, retweet that tweet, um, and like this video. Once we get 30 likes on this video, we're going to be giving away that three day pass gets you in our discord. Um, and I will say, cause we were talking before the pod. I know Josh has a, a has a tight end. He's going to save for the members. I've got a running back and another wide receiver. And Andrew always has a couple tricks up his sleeve. So, you know, uh, we love putting this in front of the paywall, um, and giving out our best information, but definitely there's a couple plays that we like to keep for our members to help give them that edge. Um, so enter that contest, look for all of our other membership options on dfscoachdoc.com and, and come join the winnings because it's been fun. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great time to, to jump in again with, with all your memberships, you get access to all of our sports, baseball and golf right now, basketball right around the corner. So join the family. We'd love to have you. And then again, make sure to tune in later this weekend for the primetime show for Josh and I, so we can get after those showdown slates on Sunday and Monday night. So. Great job today, guys. A lot of fun doing the three-man booth. Yeah. Uh, I know we'll do it some more here throughout the season. So on behalf of Joe Stanton and Josh Davis and the rest of the DFS Coach Talk team, I'm Andrew Hansen. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time as we look to crush it in DFS. <laughs>